everybody. Thanks for being here. It looks like we might have a small group today, and I am definitely okay with that, um, which just means that we might be able to talk a little bit more in depth about certain things, but thanks for being here, and uh, we hope that we'll get something out of our, our little webinar here, or roundtable, with our panel of experts. Um, let me just introduce everybody really quickly. This is Alex, there's Alex Koppel. He's at Kirby, or was at Kirby School, and he is um, on his way actually to, um, to Indiana to, for his doctorate program. And Alex today will be serving as our kind of, uh, obviously as a, a member of the private school system. Um, in addition to, he's also a master sound technician and certified and all that. And so he's here for all of your techie needs. How exciting. Uh, we have Alyssa Ani who is at Enterprise High School in Reading and she's the Northern Rep for CCDA. We have Bruce Loniker here from Akalani's High School, who is from the Bay Area, and um, he's also the CMEA Bay Area president, correct? For, for four more days. Oh! <laughs> and then I become past president. Oh, okay. So uh, we got him right at the end. Hey. Um, we have Heather Bishop, who is from Clovis North in Fresno. Um, we have Alan Garcia who is from Magnolia High School in here in the Anaheim School District. And um, we have Tina Peterson, who is um, at Irvine High School. And uh, she's going to be popping in and out because she's actually working tonight. Um, and so um, she's, you know, like the rest of us, just adapting to the, the needs of the community and the needs of the school. So she's there uh, to kind of, uh, she's here to represent, and she's the Southern uh, rep for CCDA. So thank you everybody for being here. Uh, my one request is that everybody, if you have a, uh, a question or if you have anything that you want us to address specifically, if you could put it in the group chat and then it'll be sent to me and then I will kind of disseminate it to all of the, the members or the, of the panel here that, um, that would be best. And then if you, at the very, very end, if we want to have another live Q&A session, we can. But hopefully our panel of experts who are from all over California, and that was the point, um, can give you some perspectives on what's happening from rural all the way until, you know, to uh, Orange County and, and below. So, um, but first we're gonna have a um, announcement from Molly Peters. Molly, if you're there. I am here. Hi, everybody. Happy almost end of the school year. I mean, what a, what a crazy year it's been. <laughs> um, I am the uh, CCDA High School um, Honor Choir, or Honor Choir Chair. Um, so I just, I put it on the page, but I was thinking that people probably aren't visiting the Honor Choir page right now. So this is also going to go out in an email blast before the end of the week, but I'm sure you all know what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, we decided at the executive board meeting we had last week that we, we just can't hold regional honor choirs. This is for central and coastal regions. Um, if you're in Southern California and you're in SCVA, you're, they're gonna make a different decision because that fall regional honor choir is, is run by that different organization. Um, in, in the the detail, you know, as far as auditions, um, we are still planning on doing an all-state choir. It just may look different than what we've done in the past. Um, since we use those in-person audition scores um, to populate those all-state choirs, we will be looking for an online audition platform. So that's all going work happening um, in the, um, you know, happening in the background. Um, please stay tuned, you know, check your emails. We will have an honor choir, an all-state honor choir that we are committed to giving our kids that. Um, they need that. So that's my announcement. If you have any questions, you guys can email me. Um, but I mean, I think everybody can kind of understand the rationale behind that. Um, so yeah, bummer. But has to, has to be done. Thanks, Molly. I really appreciate that. And Rochelle Randine, um, who is the current uh, SCBA president, I believe, 
Um, she just said that there's a meeting on June 13th that SCVA board is going to be meeting. So for those of you who are in Southern California, make sure you look for that um, formal announcement after June 13th. And then David, I saw your, I'm sorry, Stacey, last thing. I, I saw your question. No, we, we have not canceled all state. I mean, uh, we have, we have a CASMIC meeting, um, a CASMIC board meeting, I think this Saturday. And so, you know, a lot of that, it's just, I, we have no idea if, what CASMIC is going to look like, if there's going to be a CASMIC, if there will be honor ensembles there. And, but we will do something for the kids, even if it ends up being virtual. So please know that there is going to be a California All-State Honor Choir this year. Thanks, Molly. Okay, so why don't we get off into some of the uh, some of the topics that were I don't know if all of you who were here who are here attending saw the Google form that I put out and that we're going to be um, addressing specific topics. But if you want us to kind of shift and pivot, that those are the two words that have been in my brain ever since uh, Ethan Sperry um, was on our webinar. Is all about this shift and pivot, and as much as it, I am cringing, going, I don't want to. Uh, obviously, we have to. So um, we're going to start with some of these ideas or some of these um, topics. And if it ends up going into a different way, then it ends up going into a different way. But like I said earlier, hopefully you'll be able to pull something from what we have to say today for an hour. Um, so we have a couple of quest specific questions that came from our uh, digital and virtual teaching ideas needed category. and. We have uh, one question that says, uh, we need some ideas about keeping kids excited about choir and especially the new kids. Um, how can we keep the core focus on what choir is all about? And that's from Haley Colburn from, from Yoruba Valley High School. Anybody from the panel wanna jump off into that? Go ahead, Bruce. Bruce is muted. muted. There okay. you go. All right. Um, because we had to make the shift so quickly, we had like one day of PD and then we were out. Um, I went through a, a quite a process. And so I Zoomed um, with all my choirs twice a week, once on Monday and once on Friday. And um, basically the first couple of weeks, it was just kind of being there to let them talk. And we didn't really talk anything about choir. It was just kind of like, asking them how they were, what they did, how they were handling the, the change. And then towards the end, my wife was on a work meeting and they played, um, it's like Pictionary, but you play it online. And so we did that as uh, to start the last couple of weeks. We did it the first time and then everybody was emailing me, can we do that again? Can we do that again? Um, and you can set the number of rounds, you can put in special words so you could make it musical if you wanted. Um, and that was, an after we did that, the rate of attendance went up. So the word went out that we were doing this thing. Um, but it's really hard to do what we do um, in this Zoom format. We, um, they all wanted to sing. I said, okay, I'm recording this. And, and we tried to sing a, a round that we were working on and just in unison. And it was um, aleatoric at best. Um, so, but it's, um, I mean, I relied a lot upon veterans in the program um, and they, they have their own, each ensemble has their own group chat. And so they kind of use that to support the younger singers. And I felt that was good, but it's, um, that's a really tough thing. Um, and the work that I've been doing to get ready for next year, whatever that looks like, um, I think the best thing that I can do for them is getting them responding to choral music, listening and like listening critically um, and getting their fundamentals together. I used uh, sight reading factory and even my kids who were horrible sight readers got so much better over the course of the eight weeks that we were doing it. So that's where I am. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I can't recommend sight reading factory enough for keeping your kids skills sharp while they're away. It's the perfect tool because you can keep checking in with them. They're getting individualized instruction. It's like the best tool ever. Uh, to kind of um, go from where Bruce was, um, I ended up um, 
I think we all know that so much of choir is the social aspect of it and the, the kind of family units that are created within our ensembles. Um, so I ended up um, actually in the same way Bruce kind of made a little social hour, I just made a, a Zoom lunch hour for my choir students as an open platform to just come and hang out. That was a, a totally um, optional, you don't have to be here, just if you want to come swing by for five minutes and say hi, do that. Um, and that grew quite a lot once students realized that they had an opportunity to talk with their friends in a fairly traditional way that they would just be hanging out in the choir room. Um, and I actually ended up turning that into a recruitment tool um, where over a few weeks of building the trust within that kind of lunch, you know, drop in environment. I said, hey, you know, you guys you know, bring somebody to lunch next time you come um, that might be interested in choir next year. Um, and that actually ended up, I've had probably about 15 students sign up for choir next year just because they dropped in on lunch and saw the environment. I ended up, uh, when the groups got a lot larger, we had at one lunch, we had like 90 students all of a sudden on Zoom. Um, I ended up making small breakout rooms for different choirs so that new members could talk to old members in the same way Bruce was kind of having his little hierarchy system. So um, just offering a platform for students to to interact with one another is gonna be really, really helpful to get at the core value uh, that you wanna build your program around, as well as possibly help with some recruitment for next year. Anyone else from the panel wanna jump in and add in? I will, just one quick thing. Um, love that idea, Alex. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's so cool. I'm so glad it was so successful for you. Recruiting is a big deal, right? Retaining and recruiting in this time. Um, one of the quick things we did uh, to, to encourage students to come to the Zoom, like you were talking about, Bruce, was we did a Google Doc check-in, just a simple, how are you doing with distance learning one through five, and how are you just doing in general? Um, and any students that put ones or twos, I sent them a remind text like, hey, thinking about you, if you need anything, let me know. And for a lot of those kids, just to know that someone was um, paying attention, <laughs> that someone was listening to them and hearing that they were struggling a little bit, most of them would respond and go, oh, you know, I'm fine, I just had a rough day. Or, but I had two that I ended up referring to our um, wellness counselors that really needed some assistance. So that was a really um, nice tool to, it, it, it's how I took attendance. I mean, we weren't required to take attendance, but that's how I knew who was there in some of the larger classes because um, it would just dump into a, into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and the kids really liked knowing that someone was paying attention and, and responding if they were having a hard time. So that was a nice way to just sort of electronically reach out to them as well that worked for us. One of the questions that I guess we can kind of morph into is, you know, is there a difference or is anybody seeing a difference between staying engaged uh, versus, uh, where was the, what, where was the question that I was looking for? Um, staying engaged versus just staying in the classroom, like being had the attendance wise, does that make sense? So have you been, is there a difference for you about just showing up versus being engaged properly? Anyway. I was going to, I'll, speak to that. I'm Heather. Um, I was having a little bit of trouble keeping the kids. I think the, the question that was posed earlier is how do you keep them engaged in what choir is in your program? And I love all the ideas, but keeping them was something, and we don't have all the variables of what's happening in their own homes as well. Like their parents have been thrown into teacher position that they haven't had in the last 10 years and dealing with maybe siblings having to share the computer or finding a quiet space to feel comfortable singing when maybe they're not comfortable singing in front of their family or anyone. Um, I, I feel like we need to actually put up some recordings of what our choir program has done, maybe have them do some research on some songs that they really like listening to and they'd like to do in the future because we know we're gonna come back from this just have them keep looking. But at the same time, it's, a, it's an elective that we want them to choose the next time. So I, I fear talking with some of my colleagues, um, pouring on too much uh, theory 
uh, things that we don't necessarily like written work, things that we don't necessarily do during a normal time and grading is going to be super different. Um, I want them to come back. So it's kind of a double edged sword, like holding them accountable, having fun. Those are all kind of tricky things. And then showing them what it will be, not what it could be. But when we come back and reflect on the past and keeping community, which is what you've all spoken to already with the Zoom meetings. So anyway, those are some of my experiences in the past couple of months. Does anybody on the panel have any ideas about how they're approaching recruitment at this time? Um, I know that recruitment is different from retention. And so do you have any other, do you have any um, uh, hard opinions or, or things that you've done to do recruitment and for retention? Daisy, I have, um, can I say one thing? Sure. Um, what I, one of my projects I did this year, and I got this from a colleague, I, I teach in the Heart District and there are 13 schools, junior high and high school. So um, one of my colleagues, her, one of her first distance learning assignments was have the kids do a flip grid two minute or like minute and a half, like why they like choir. And then she spliced it together for a promo. So I did that too. Um, and that was really great for A, because, you know, now I have this product, it's attached to my work email signature, a link, so everybody sees it. Um, and, uh, and then it also got the kids talking about why they liked choir. And, you know, it was like, it was so heartwarming. Of course, I was like crying and they, you know, said nice things about each other and me and the experiences. And like, it was, it was another good way to, for them to say like, why am I in choir? So, I mean, if, you know, if you're looking for, like, that's could be maybe a first assignment in the fall, assuming your distance, like, um, you know, introduce yourself to me, and then you can do them private on Flipgrid, or you can make them all public, but that was really a, a great experience um, for me, and I think, you know, the kids really enjoyed doing it, too. That's great, and I saw your video. It was kind of awesome. <laughs> Anybody else have anything about retention? No, I, I I was going to speak about recruitment just a little bit. Hi, Alyssa, I'm up in Reading here. And um, some of the things I did in the spring, which I know we're all leaving our schools now this week, or already some of you are already done, lucky dogs. Um, I, uh, I went in actually with uh, Zoom meetings with a lot of my junior high kids. Um, I sat in on some of their classes. I danced with the junior high show choir in my pajamas um, and my dog and cat attacking me. And the kids just had a blast with that, especially when their teacher's connection um, disappeared. And all of a sudden I was in charge of the Zoom meeting with a bunch of kids I don't know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and the, and the same thing could happen. I'm sure that all of us are already looking at the fall and going, oh, my gosh, we're going to be doing a lot of online. There's no reason why you can't visit your junior high more often. Um, that feeds into your high school to start the process of the years be beyond next year um, to get those kids engaged and interested. Um, we're a big believers up here of using social media to talk to our kids. They seem to check it more than anything else. So if you don't have an Instagram and a Snapchat for your music department or your choir program, um, I highly recommend it because they will check that and they do it and they'll let you know because they'll like it every time you put something up. And um, so between the band director and I, we split that duty constantly. And we don't really call it a duty. We just put up stuff randomly as far as uh, whether it be silly pictures um, that show the fun things that we've done in choir or our band program, or we're sending them links or information about awards, whatever it may be. Um, we just try to keep them engaged often through that social media aspect. Um, and then to kind of, start maybe tipping this towards fall and thoughts. Um, one of the conversations that I have had with my, I've started having with my admin and some uh, coming to terms with what my program will not be next year. Um, we are looking at a hybrid model in our area for um, maybe about a quarter of the kids coming onto the campus every single day, uh, about four, for four days. And we're a campus of about 1200 students. So we'd have about 300 people on campus every day. And then on the fifth day of the school week would be a flex day for office hours, potential one-on-one -on -one tutoring, maybe small ensembles. We're having that discussion next Tuesday. Um, 
to get together. But um, the, the big conversation I started with my principal actually today was, let me enroll every kid in the same choir and say, I know that I've got, I mean, I've got five different choirs uh, during my school day, but let me just enroll all of my kids in one and let me have a Monday choir, a Tuesday choir, a Wednesday choir, and a Thursday choir and start doing what I, the, what I can do best with those kids rather than try to maintain the certain name of a certain choir um, and work with the best with what I have rather than trying to recreate something that I may have my chamber singers spread out Monday through Thursday if they're gonna go by alpha because that's one of the talks. They're talking also about freshmen come Monday, sophomores Tuesday, right. and so on and so forth. And although, yeah, that would kind of help align some of the curriculum for choir and what we normally do, um, you still could have seniors who sign up for choir and it's their very first year and being in choir. And I'm gonna toss them in with my four-year chamber kids. So um, maybe just the, the, just the coming to terms with your program and with kind of a coming to God, a morning, a lot of whiskey, whatever it may be, um, to say, hey, it's, we, things are gonna have to be different next year. And maybe it's the time to just take that change and say, hey, I've got these kids on Monday in six period, let's make the best with those kids and do curriculum and music that suits their voices best to make them fly instead of saying, I must have acapella, I must have chamber, I must have men's class, uh, I must have a high voice class, whatever it may be. It just, um, it, it, once I kind of had that realization, it was a weight lifted off of my shoulders um, of trying to maintain what is normal, but instead trying to make the best of what we've got. Is there anybody else on the panel who's heard from maybe their administration on the different permutations of what you're going to do or what next year might look like? Because I, I think everybody, we're all in the same boat, right? We're all waiting on the state of California to come down with what they expect from us and then our individual districts are going to make those decisions. So has anybody had higher, you know, higher talks with their administration? like Alyssa, on how they're going to look at next year? Um, I'll say something. Uh, so, oh, hi, I'm Alan. Um, our district has already created a, uh, a district task force on, on uh, next year's learning and, and the different permutations in which they're gonna kind of execute the, the, the teaching. Is it gonna be just all fully online learning? Is it going to be some sort of hybrid model? Uh, or is it going to just be back to business as usual? Like they're, they're looking at various different types. And while they haven't made a formal announcement, our admin at our school has asked us to kind of come up with different plans for different um, different scenarios, right? So you have to start kind of thinking, what, what does the year look like if we're all online? Um, what, does the, what does your first day look like if you're kind of seeing only some kids on some days? Um, uh, and they actually asked us, to, we have a VAPA coordinator, so that VAPA coordinator used to be a band director. He's kind of the, the voice for, for performing arts um, and, and visual arts as well, but he's, he's kind of our, our liaison to the, to the district as to what our programs really look like and how they're a little bit different than a traditional um, pen and paper class. What I would recommend, um, because we um, we because we have that luxury, if you don't, if you have someone in your district, and that could be could be you, I think it's important for us to be part of those conversations when it comes to our district making those decisions, because obviously things are changing. But um, in right now, our district is leaning towards a, a hybrid, and I'm I'm thinking as things like sectionals could be possible, um, because usually. Uh, the sections will is obviously only going to be a fourth or a third or a half of a choir, right? And then depending on the uh, on the day, you can you can work with different kids, and and you could even um, alternate it so that it's um, you don't have to necessarily have all. If you have five choirs, for instance, you don't have to have all five choirs as set choirs. But for for the first semester or however long this is happening, you I I think it's important to be fluid to be allowing the, the kind of the choirs to kind of mesh, mesh into just a program together um, because I'll give you more flexibility to, um, to still sing with the kids if, if that's your model. Um, and, and that's what we're doing. That's what I'm kind of starting to put my head around is to think maybe um, there are other ways I can approach having 
um, my ensemble is me. And maybe instead of just my four choirs that I have, I can um, kind of mesh them into, into two, two big ones and, and I just meet with small sections each day. So my school uh, looks a little bit different uh, as a private school. Um, we're we're uh, exploring models kind of that seem really similar to what you guys are talking about in terms of uh, being, uh, you know, half of campus is on, uh, half of the school is on campus one day, half of it the next day. Um, we actually have a very small student body, so we're able to, to kind of manage that. Um, what I think, uh, we are much more conservative. My school is much, much more conservative about um, opening back up. Um, and I've been already told with pretty uh, hard fact that we won't be, uh, that we won't be able to offer ensembles uh, early in the semester next year. Um, but what we have been doing is designing uh, online programming around uh, keeping the students engaged um, and doing, you know, virtual choir projects and doing sight reading factory and keeping the kids uh, in choir so they're still signed up for choir um, and doing projects um, so that they kind of can they feel that continuity um, but it's it's almost with certainty that I won't that my school won't see a choir until possibly second semester next year. That's unfortunate and I'm sure you're not going to be the only school who's going to kind of make that specific decision right. Um, is there anybody else on the panel who can maybe see if, if let's say we do some sort of hybrid uh, where we're half in the classroom, half in distance learning, or maybe half of your choir is going to attend at different times. Um, has anybody thought about the idea of how they're going to do small group learning? And um, that comes from one of our one of our questions from the from the Google form is what are some of the ideas that they can utilize small group learning here? Sure, Besides I can, sectionals. Sure, I can speak to that quickly. Um, one of the things we did to end the year was the virtual talent show where they all submitted videos. I think Alex was talking about that earlier. Uh, what I noticed is so many students have um, either keyboards or ukuleles, guitars, pianos, or the ability to create their own sort of beats and background accompaniments or to download um, uh, tracks and so something I, I thought would be fun for them that would meet state national standards of composition and improvisation is to have a songwriting unit to start the year the first nine weeks so we probably won't have a concert so there's no need to prepare for that sectionals are fine but if we're not preparing for a concert we can use them as voice lessons but the idea that they would get some basic skills um, it's easy to learn three chords in ukulele you know, and how many pop tunes can we sing with three chords? All of them, right? <laughs> so the idea that they could actually create, and so the idea of and that covers the theory and it covers the sight reading and it keeps them singing. It engages them with an instrument. So it's not as much fun to sing a cappella by yourself. I mean, Heather, you talked about kids don't maybe feel comfortable singing in their home in front of their family, but the idea of them humming and strumming, um, and I sort of, I broached that idea with the kids saying, you know, our district hasn't decided, are we a hybrid? Are we distance learning? Are we back full time? There's not a, been a decision made. So I just sort of like with the top groups, I just pulled them in a Zoom meeting. Went, Do you think this would be fun? They are so excited about it that even if we're back like normal, which we won't be, but if it would be for some weird reason, they're like, we're still doing this, the, the songwriting unit, right? Cause that's really cool. I'm like, great. Um, and so the kids were pretty excited about the idea of, um, being able to create their own music and learn how to get the ideas here out onto paper and maybe collaborate like you could send your music to a friend and they could play it um and so that's uh, that was an idea because i got to thinking about what we do we can't do this way and we all know that so what can we do that's that's still music that still lets them sing um and and is something completely different so we are creative artists and we're going to come up with creative ways to do that um, and so our kids here are super excited about this, this uh, songwriting uh, idea. Um, and then, you know, with these breakout rooms in Zoom, we can have our beginning ukulele players in one breakout room and our advanced players in another room and our intermediate people here. And um, so it, the technology can help, technology can help with that. Um, but that's one way that we're going to try and meet standards. Uh, frankly, some I've never met before. It's my 25th year teaching. I've never taught composition. We're always preparing for concerts, right? So I'm super excited to be able to have this opportunity and the kids are as well. So completely different than what we're used to, but still meeting um, all of the standards that, that we have been set for us by state and, and national um, organizations. So we're excited about that as an option, something different. 
Tina, can you, um, a, a question from CJ, can you uh, speak to the resources that you're using to teach songwriting? That is such a good question, CJ. Would you like to be my resource? I have not started this, nor have I built it. I'm building it as the planes in the air, as they say, right? Um, that will be my summer project, right? I just didn't even know if the kids would be interested, and they just went nuts. And so as soon as this year's over, CJ, I have the summer months to figure that out. But you and I can work together if you like. That would be awesome. <laughs> no, I, to be perfectly honest, I haven't started at all. So, but I think it'll be fun. And I guess I'll have to learn to play ukulele. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Molly <laughs> Peters says that there's a songwriting course on Teachers Pay Teachers. I don't know if all of you know that website. I'm hope, I hope that you do. Um, sometimes I find it's a little iffy only because it's very much aimed towards elementary and middle school. And I have to kind of sift through everything to find something for high school. And um, the other thing is, you know, I was talking to Alex Koppel earlier today and we were talking about that there are going to be so many courses that you have the time to do this summer to, to help yourself create that other, uh, that other course unit. Um, we are in a idea where we don't have to uh, react anymore for the immediate. We can actually plan. So I think that will, that will help a lot of people. Alex, can you speak to something on sure. that? Um, I think that, uh, you know, it would be really, really uh, in everybody's best interest to, um, as teachers, we enjoy our summers and we like having our time down and to not, you know, do as much. But I think that this might be one of those summers where buckling down, making a plan early in the summer and then teaching yourself the skills you'll need, you know, through the year um, will be really beneficial. Um, you know, one of the things that Stacey and I were talking about was, um, you know, getting to know iMovie and GarageBand. And if you feel like you can step it up to the next level, Pro Tools and Premiere and things like that. Um, because you can create a ton of buy-in to your program by creating projects with your students. And that doesn't mean virtual choirs or anything like that. I feel like that's kind of a bad word around here. Um, but it, creating any kind of a project um, is, uh, it, 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 letting students watch other students perform is, I, I just finished my finals this morning and it's the most heartwarming thing to watch my entire class you know, blow up the chat window and applaud for each other and get so invested for, you know, maybe a little bit of time of my investment of kind of putting together some videos and a little streamer and a, and a teaser video, but they get so excited to watch themselves on TV. It's, it's like kind of a crazy psychological effect that they just like to see themselves performing in front of other people. So invest the time now to help yourself with the tech side of this. Unfortunately, tech is not a part of our job and it will be for next year. And so, you know, make a plan, figure out what you need to learn, figure out what you are able to learn feasibly in a summer. Don't kill yourself, but really, you know, kind of make a plan and, and stick to it and try to learn these things. Khan Academy is great as well. Um, they have tons of online resources. And also, I mean, I'm sure you guys have looked up a YouTube video about how to plant a green onion before. There's tons of videos <laughs> about how to use Premiere and how to use Pro Tools and how to use iMovie. Um, and I, I still, I mean, I, I use these pieces of software every day. If I don't know something, I'm sitting there, I'm editing, you quick blast into YouTube, somebody's figured it out, somebody's got the answer for you in a two minute video and you're off and rolling again. It's really not as daunting as it seems. So um, be, be, you know, invest yourself in this. To kind of piggyback on Alex there as well, um, I did the, the virtual choir thing without bouncing heads. I just uh, scrolled a bunch of slideshow pictures over my kids singing, um, which I did all in Adobe, um, Adobe Audition and then Premiere Pro. And um, one of the things I think that we all just need to remember is to advocate ourselves to our technology department. If you have a solid technology department at your district, don't be afraid to ask them for stuff like that because they want to spend the money on you right now. And if um, the need of something like the Adobe Creative Cloud uh, for educators is usually 20 bucks a month and is only, and that gets you Photoshop and Illustrator as well as how to build websites and all these other different things. But, and like Alex said, everything's on there for um, how to do it on YouTube because that's how I learned how to use it. But my district already pays for Adobe. They didn't send out a mass email to all of us. I found out through happenstance this year that we had access to Photoshop and Illustrator. So there may be some things that are out there in your district um, that you might have access to to just ask for them. And then um, to pile on more resource ideas because compiling all this, um, I'm on a panel right now with Western ACDA 
and uh, we are compiling as much as we can resource wise in all the different um, subgroups of ACDA that we do have. Um, we're coming together uh, weekly right now with the idea that this is also going nationally uh, to put together as many resources as we can for choral teachers um, in, in the Western District um, to give you guys as many ideas as we can this summer. And there's like, we're not gonna be working on this all summer. The idea is to get this out to you hopefully by like June 30th, I think is their target date so that you do have time to work on things throughout the summer because it's gonna be a summer of computing for all of us. Right. Um, really quickly, just to address a couple things that Alyssa said, thank you for reminding me. I see a few people in the chat window that are talking about um, Final Cut and uh, using Logic. Great options, don't get me wrong, they're, they're perfect to do this stuff. Um, the reason that I uh, chose to dig deep into Premiere is because likely your school district or somewhere around you has access and you can get that for free. Uh, my school provides it, the university provides it. There are a lot of different places you can find free licenses for the Adobe Creative Suite, which has video editing and audio editing software all included in it, which is one of the really big powerful things about it. My only other um, just kind of warning to you is if you do decide to go down the road of Final Cut or uh, Premiere or anything like that, talk to your tech, uh, your tech teams about getting you computers that are gonna be able to handle that. It is gonna be so frustrating for you to try to do that on your 12 year old MacBook, um, just because it's slow and it won't render things properly. Um, it's really frustrating. So talk to them and say, hey, you know, here's my plan for next year. I need, a, I need a new Mac Pro. That's what I need in my classroom. And likely if, if you can make good justifications for all the projects you're gonna do with it, they're gonna, they're gonna help you or find another solution for you, right? Get a good iMac or something like that. But um, definitely just beware that, you know, you can't, you can't do these really heavy editing projects on, you know, older laptops or anything like that. I so, was, in, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was okay. in, um, I was uh, talking with Alex and uh, one of the things that he definitely made sure was, do I have the computer or do I have the, um, do I, do I actually have the device that is going to be able to facilitate all the things that I need? And I, that was like the last thing I was thinking about. I was going, oh, well, I need this toy and I need that toy and I need something to do this. And he's like, but if you have no computer that that's going to create, uh, that's going to do for you what you need it to do, then it's not going to mean anything. Uh, Bruce, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, I talked about this. Uh, I'm on the Western Division uh, Task Force with um, Alyssa. Um, Real-time music solutions, which um, does basically practice tracks for musicals, they just released a beta version of Rehearsal Live. Um, and I, I, when they've been on Facebook a couple of times, so I called them. And basically what it is, it's like you're Zooming, except you can hear everybody and you can talk to them while you're, and they're, the lag time, they're, they work something out with different um, providers and different processors to where they've eliminated a lot of that. So you can have them sing and record and then play it back to them, but you can give instructions in real time. So this might be something, um, I'm gonna try it with some of my seniors, I already told them about it over the summer. Um, I'm looking in the chat and I see something from Genevieve Tepp, who I absolutely love. Hi, Genevieve. Um, but she says, am I the only one who's farming out the editing? And the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, if we all had, you know, if we, if you have the budget to, to farm, to farm it out, do it. I mean, you have to think of, you know, what's going to work out best for you as well. If you are just going to go crazy trying to create a virtual choir that you're learning how to do from scratch, I mean, you, you have to do what's going to be best for you. Um, so I think, um, I don't, I, I'm hoping that there's not a lot of administrators out there who are going, well, can't you just put this together or doesn't this just, you know, um, I think it's, hopefully become quite clear that if you are going to farm it out is going to take money. Uh, I had to explain that to my, uh, my administration, but we also were going, you know, but here are the things we can do. So um, hopefully if you are going to farm it out, make sure that you have the, the budget for that um, and you have the interest for it because I would hate for you to kind of say, okay, I'm going to spend $2,000 on this project and four kids submit their, 
in you know their video. So make so sure I, that that's part of it. Go ahead, Alex. I was just gonna say, so I'm actually a person that people are farming these projects out to um, for me to, I've had three uh, different people kind of approach me about doing these projects. Um, and a few people are asking about pricing schemes, just so you're aware of what my pricing scheme is. Um, I'm trying to do this a, a much more on the cheap than I think pros will do, just because I'm trying to help support this kind of community right now. But I, I usually do it, uh, I, I charge per kid $25 per video that gets submitted, plus then a fee of how long the video is. So, if, you know, like a three minute video is uh it takes probably about maybe between 80 and 100 hours for me to edit um with uh you know 25 or 30 singers so that usually adds up to about uh usually adds up to about a thousand bucks uh or a little bit more if we uh you know if it gets to be a bigger project than that so there are affordable ways to do it though and honestly though i i hate to say this like i i'm kind of suckering off these people it is so doable for you to do this even if you think you don't have the time to do it it is so doable for you to do it it's you know maybe two weeks of a learning curve and it's uh you know it can be done so and that yes that is video and audio um usually in a tile you know kind of the, the traditional um virtual choir style again i'll charge more if they want fancy video effects and you know things for me to you know do fancy things so but it's usually about a thousand bucks plus uh alex it, um i'm seeing in the chat somebody said are you willing to teach a workshop so on your way to indiana <laughs> can, yeah, you, can you kind of just zoom, you know? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm happy to help anybody, honestly. Just send me an email. I'm happy to talk you through it. Um, just know that, um, you know, again, like the, the baseline of this is probably going to take you a little bit of time just to get familiar with these uh, programs. Um, so uh, be wary that, you know, a, a tutorial might not be, uh, oh, I can teach you how to do this in half an hour over Zoom. It's more like you're probably going to need to spend a few weeks getting up and running and understanding, and then I can kind of teach you the basics of how to put everything together. But I'm happy to help, and I'd be happy to do that for free, too, because I just want this to be a thing that's out there and, you know, take away that stigma that virtual choirs are really hard and impossible. The impossible thing is getting your kids to turn your videos. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's the impossible thing. So, <laughs> but the, the editing part of it is, is, is doable. Alex, um, there's a couple people who are... Um message who want to message you so if you want to give them your information that sure. would i'm just going to drop my info in the chat window for all of you you're welcome to text me or email me and i'm happy to help you as i um, can get to your emails and texts for the rest of the panel is there anybody who has any ideas about that is not a virtual choir so let's just say a virtual choir is not in your cards and you're just like that is something that is a rabbit hole i don't want to go down uh, do you have any other performance um uh, ideas that some of our teachers can use. No virtual choirs or, or bust. <laughs> Go ahead, Bruce. Um, I ordered um, some music for next fall, anticipating we might be online. So I found a lot of aleatoric stuff that we can actually perform. I don't know if anybody saw it, but Scott Hannah Weir at Santa Clara so um, did a live concert that was just amazing. Um, and so, I mean, that's one option. And the other thing they did is I got some contemporary acapella because Deke Sharon said that he would give practice tracks for free to anybody who was doing his arrangements. Um, and that's something that, you know, we can maybe put together um, if we can, and that's down the road when we can see them in person. So that's my plan. Anybody else on the panel? Um, how are you working with um, performances if let's say you're not a one-on-one -on -one school? So maybe if you're from uh, more of the Central Valley or from a lower socioeconomic, if you're in uh, rural or, I mean, you could be in any of the metropolitan cities too. Um, if you're not a one-to-one -one district, how are you facilitating some of those performance opportunities or are you just taking the summer to just kind of figure that out? Anybody? Heather, you have anything? Um, for us, we're kind of waiting until July 15th. I mean, we're kind of at a standstill until then. That's what our districts instructed us. Uh, we kind of have these benchmarks, 1st and 15th of June and July, to get updates. And I'm meeting with uh, my colleagues in our district, trying to come up with some ideas, um, troubleshooting, different scenarios like Alan was talking about. 
and um, maybe some shared instruction uh, between us, coming up with some fun ideas, whether they're theater-based or um, just kind of feeding off each other's um, strengths and uh, maybe asking colleagues like all of you uh, to visit our kids Zoom and teach a lesson and keep them energized that way. I know my kids always like having Carrie, Dr. Earnhardt come in and uh, work with them and it's always a fun day. So I know she would be on board. Um, that's the other thing is tap your universities in your area or outside your area to um, get your kids psyched up and cause it's in their best interest too because they want them in the future as well. And they have cool ideas. So um, yeah, I'm sorry I don't have a whole lot to add there but we're just talking at this point. Anybody else on the panel have something to add to that? Is there anybody on the panel who maybe is having issues with even, you know, how do you keep your student engaged if they don't have a internet access or if they don't have a hotspot or if they don't have a computer? You know, how is all of this performance oriented stuff um, being utilized in your district? Well, up, I can say up here in NorCal, we handed out at my school, I think about 700 Chromebooks for about 1200 kids um and there has been literally in the town just north of us right below lake shasta they actually stationed buses in the community with hot spots to make sure that those areas had internet access um and then at that and we actually do have school uh you know areas that don't have any internet access and I, it's not my school, but I, I know that they're trying to adjust curriculum as they can, um, whether it be they just record at home and send it in via good old snail mail um, and just actually making packets of musical work that, that can be sent home. Uh, most people still have some kind of device, of course, at home they can play with. Um, maybe it be a CD player or, you know, the day they come down from the mountain, the teacher agrees to meet with that student. Um, in order to meet up with those kids who do live in the mountains and have no internet access. Um, there has been times where that has happened. I've heard that I've had teacher friends who've done that where they've led, said, okay, well, I'm coming in on Tuesday because we got to make a Costco run. All right, here's your music packet. And they're, they're making things like that happen. So it's, it's, it becomes down to the more individualized instruction to the point where right now, I know Tina's collecting uniforms. I've got about 10 strays and I'm about ready to just go to their house and say, I don't know why you want to keep your black dress. Nobody wants to see you in this except for me. So I'm about ready to start driving around town and knocking on their apartment doors and their hotel room doors and their homes and say, hey, let me have my dress back. Let me have my tux jacket back, please. A little more effort with it's it's that extra effort where normally we'd put it into performances we're gonna have to put it into more of the individualized instruction this next year because we would spend the time for the group we might just have to do that more for the for the one-on-one -on -one things or yes. to spend that time to learn a new computing idea or whatever that may be i mean i don't know about y'all but my saturdays have been really empty the last few months here and I've learned a lot. I've learned how to do construction in my house, but I've also sat down and really used that time too to reflect upon what am I gonna do to make next year better for the kids. I know we've sat here and talked about, you know, the kids aren't engaged, the kids aren't engaged. Um, yeah, my virtual choir of 53 kids, yeah, there was 21 who turned in their assignment, but I'm not gonna throw those other 30 who didn't send it in under the bus and say, no, you know, we're not going to do this because you didn't do it. I'm going to make the best of it. Say, nope, this is our group and go for it. And we did the same thing. We actually did a virtual music department with the band and the choir doing a simple song together. And we had the same amount of kids. It was like less than 40% of the kids turned in something. But I think a lot of our kids still, like all of us, we're in mourning for what we've lost. And the idea that you know, they, this was thrust upon them as well as us, and we're all trying to Oh no, Alyssa. <laughs> she was just about to get to the good stuff. Good stuff yeah. <laughs> uh, can, does somebody want to jump in? Uh, so that way we can give Alyssa some time to 
catch back up? I, I would, um, I'm on a couple task force for school too, uh, with academic um, teachers, academic senate. And it is not just choir that kids are disengaging and- Foundation it, levels increase. Oh, <laughs> So, um, I mean, that is one thing in our favor, but one thing that we have to really educate our communities on if we are distance learning is the accountability will change, at least where I live, um, to where this grace period is over <laughs> and uh, they need to get real about getting their work done. And, um, that goes for simple lessons about how you're feeling to AP whatever and uh, get your stuff turned in. And I think it's gonna take the whole summer of communicating to families that you guys need to come up with a plan because it's gonna be different this fall. And that's up to our admin to do that. That's just me. I, I completely agree. Um, Alyssa, before you, uh, you cut out like right in the middle of your Braveheart speech, and so <laughs> I don't know if you also, can... the thing that says that my internet connection is unstable, which is why I think I've been kicked out of here twice already. And I don't know why it's being weird today, but girl, whatever. you need to get, you need to get closer to that bus that is around your area. Seriously. <laughs> so, um, you were right in the middle of saying something about, you know, kids, you know, being there or not being there. Yeah. Um, well, I don't remember. I don't know where I kind of cut off, but I, it was just like, the idea that next fall, once they realize that this is here to stay, at least hopefully not forever, but at least for a while, that they will be more adept to it. And if we start off the year with a more engaged idea for us as teachers, instead of just sending them busy work, which I know we're all probably guilty of, we were like, okay, we have to get something out to you because our admin's telling us to, but stuff that they can be successful with and that they feel like they're learning something and that they're a part of something rather than just doing something. Um, hopefully with our, um, we all get, if we do this hybrid model that we get to see our kids once a week, I think that's going to help all of us a lot. Uh, just because we're, um, we have only a couple more minutes. Does anybody want to say how they've been using their online presence for more team building exercises or morale that comes from Keith Hancock at Tesoro High School? Go ahead, Bruce. Um, I, uh, in Google Classroom, on the days that our classes met, um, I posted a poem of the day because we start rehearsal usually by I read a poem because poets.org will send you a poem a day. Um, and then I used to cook professionally, and my kids know that. And it was like two weeks in, and um, one, of the, one of my juniors said, hey, why don't you do a recipe for us every day, well, along with poem of, poem of the day? So I have a 23 page document now of recipes and some of them we did by request. So I started out with like basics like bechamel and marinara. And then the same girl goes, yeah, those are easy. How about something challenging? So the next day I put up a recipe for beef Wellington, which is like so labor intensive. Um, but, and um, I did my mom's recipe for tuna noodle casserole because it's comfort food. Um, I grew up in the Midwest, if you didn't know. Um, and, and for those uh, of you who don't know, Bruce is an amazing chef. So just putting that out there. Um, but it was, um, and then I had, one of my kids is allergic to everything. So I found a vegan zucchini bread recipe that he could actually make and eat. Um, so I'm, I'm in the process of organizing it all. And I'm going to send it out to all the families. But that was how I kind of kept them on their toes. You know, I had asked my, my students, what was, what was better, having a week-long um, week project that you, get to, that you get to take your time on and then just turn it in, or a daily thing where they get to check in, and as soon as they know they're done with it, they're done, and then they can move on. And a lot of them said the daily check-in was the easiest thing to do because it was, the, it was uh, that, that level of normalcy. They would have, if I don't have a block schedule, I have a class every single day. So they were able to see me every day. So um, you could pull your kids too and see, you know, what was easier to do a week long project that they can get to whenever they get to it. Or was it easy to just do a, you know, a five to 10 minute assignment every single day. And then that was how they got, 
they got to see you. Anybody else on the panel have any morale building? I mean, this is really important because our first day of school is coming up in August and we're not gonna be able to do what we usually do. So anybody else? Um, um, I've been re I've, I've been kind of um, reflecting on that first day, right? Because what, what, what do people typically do on their first day is to try to build connections with the kids. Um, and at least that's what I'm doing here. And I'm thinking what, what what, how can I, I, I play a lot of games, I guess, with the kids on, on that first day and that really that first week, just kind of getting to know names, getting to know um, them and getting to, for them to know each other. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to think of how can I create games that are online that the kids can participate in um, because we don't know what August is going to look like, but we know it's probably not going to be what we normally do. So um, I was thinking, um, are there any games that we could play um, online and and one and, and a colleague of mine recommend, recommended that there's um, virtual um, um, escape rooms online for both free and and there's some that are paid um, some of them are Harry Potter themed or, or um, Minecraft themed and uh, my kids uh, I mean they they do like a lot of they like to go out with each other and, and have fun but then that's kind of something you can do from the comfort of your own home and they have to work together and work in teams so that's just one thing I was thinking of if I want to build camaraderie within sections or within the choir, um, I can break up the kids into different groups and we can have, and I could be there to kind of help moderate and facilitate so that um, it, it's all very positive. I don't know if anyone's really competitive, but it, it'll, it'll be, that's something that I'm already looking into. Um, and it's, there's free versions, of, but there's also paid ones as well. Go ahead, Heather. Oh, I did a lot of activity activities uh, surrounding my seniors since they were about to leave and they kind of got cheated out of a lot of cool things they looked forward to. Um, and part of it was the underclassmen dedication on Flipgrid. They needed to pick someone or all the seniors or whoever, since we didn't have time for awards and all of that. Um, they did a Flipgrid uh, dedication to someone. So they all got to see Flipgrid's really cool. We did a lot on that. Um, also, then that was the seniors' turn, and they did their talk. We always have a, a time either before, it's usually before the senior, well, the, the end of the year concert where we all sit and talk, and the seniors talk about their experiences, what stood out to them, their highlights, why they joined, why they stayed, um, kind of encouraging passing the baton to the next class. Um, so we did some of that on Flipgrid. Uh, I would say before school's out, it might be cool to uh, get your choir government going for next year and get that small group to be with you in the journey that is unfamiliar over the summer, um, planning, helping you plan next fall for these icebreakers on the first day. Or, you know, most of my kids are definitely more tech savvy than I am. I'm a pretty much an old dog learning all of this, listening to all of you taking notes on my phone. Um, you know, it is different. It's different for them and it's different for us. Um, I learned from not necessarily a mentored teacher, but a young teacher who, who knows how to do all of this stuff. So it's tricky. It's emotional. As I get emotional talking about it, I miss it too. Um, yeah, so involve the kids in your planning for the fall. And yeah, I, I think that's the way to go that would keep a core group involved. Get a remind person, because that was invaluable. I have a student that did that for me. A student did the senior farewell uh, video that was like a half hour long. I just supplied, um, I had the kids, one of their assignments was a letter of reflection. Um, and I would take paragraphs out of each one and put it on some sort of colorful background and send it to her to put into the video. So um, you just use your kids as much as possible. And I think that empowers them, even though they're not in the room. And it also uh, lifts them up in the other kids' eyes, too. I mean, you just got to tell this person has done this for us, you know, and and uh, that's a way of building their confidence before we're back together again. I, I completely agree with Heather um, on, some, on the, the, the student, um, utilizing the students. 
Um, but one of the, the, and we'll wrap it up here. Um, one of the things I just wanted to hit on that, that Heather had, had, you know, has maybe unintentionally said, uh, but we have to, uh, you know, we have, we have to take care of ourselves too. So uh, be, as much as you are utilizing your students and we're doing a lot of this for our students, do stuff for yourself too. I mean, be a part of the music educators creating online learning on Facebook. Listen to all these music education podcasts um, and just know that what you're going through, you don't have to go through it alone. And most of the things that people really want to share are for grabs. So don't feel bad that it was not an original idea. Just everybody, everybody shares, everybody steals, and it's fine it's, uh, in education, right? Um, so thank you to our entire panel. Uh, we really, I really appreciate you, you know, giving your expertise out here. For those of you who are on curfew tonight, uh, please be safe and, uh, you know, stay inside. And, and I'm, you know, we're, we're hoping everybody is going to be safe and healthy at this time. So thanks everybody for being here and, and enjoy the summer. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Will this chat be available as well, Stacy, online as long as uh, in addition to the recording? Uh, hopefully, lots of good stuff in the chat. Yeah, hopefully, I'm gonna. I'm planning on um, uh, photocopying, not photocopying it, duh. <laughs> uh, copy and paste. I think there's a way on Zoom to do that. I just there's just so much good information with um, resources and stuff. It'd be nice to have that as well as the recording itself. So. Absolutely. Before we log off, we should be sure and do that. So thank you. Sure. And Na Young with your baby. I know. Oh I was about to say Na Young is the cutest baby ever. Oh. <laughs> so little. Oh my gosh. Cute. All of my daughters like had to come on and like show their face and then leave. I know, they were oh so my god. Adorable. Get oh out my. of here, please. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everyone. So Bye. 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 Good to see everybody. Bye.